federal government has ruled out hiring mercenaries to fight the insurgency war, saying the country has enough personnel and resources to fight insecurity, especially with the reform of the armed forces by President Muhammad Buhari. To discuss this with me is security expert Onye Kachi Adekoya. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me and good evening to the viewers. So the idea of um, hiring mercenaries to fight insurgency is, is being ruled out by the chief of defense staff. Um, they make reference to the reforms in the army, just as I stated earlier, and enough resources plus personnel to fight the insurgency. They also actually insisted against negotiations, calling it weakness and um, incapacity on the part of government. So I want to ask you, reality, is there anything wrong with using mercenaries to fight this insurgency? Let's not also forget the fact that we have had our forces overstretched. And even after talking tough and shutting the, um, saying that the airspace around Zamfara was a no-fly zone, we still had two cases of these same bandits abducting people. So really, what's wrong with that? Well, um, thank you for the question. I think in proper, if we really proper context, it is left for the commander in chief to determine the best way he wants to approach issues of national security. I think that for this current setup, um, national pride, uh, perhaps, may be the reason why they don't want to go that route. But again, you can say should we put pride before the, the protection of lives and property? Maybe not. Um, so there's no one size fits all. There's no problem in getting help. Um, and getting help within your overarching strategy. So it depends on what the approach is. I sense that um, the current setup, the, that's the new service chief, are trying now to be more aggressive more proactive and they want to be more on the front foot the only challenge they will have is that the nsc has said that billions of naira which was budgeted for purchase of ammunition um, is almost nowhere to be found so how do you pro prosecute an aggressive posture without munitions uh, so maybe they have something off their sleeves we don't know um, we, we, uh, we perhaps should give them some time and see what, what they come up with. But in the near term, in the near term, the, the situation is quite hydra-headed. Mm -hmm. It is dynamic. It, is, it has gone beyond the static unitaristic approach to security, which hitherto we have been used to. Mm. So clearly, certain things must change on the ground, and they must begin to change in the local communities. Okay. Now... We remember the marching order that was given by Mr. President to shoot at sight, you know, all of these terrorists. Um, and there was recently a, a video that was released recently about um, the people that were killed, some of the bandits that were attacked uh, by these shoot and sight orders. But help us to understand if this shoot at sight strategy is really working. Don't forget, today, Kaduna was in the news. Even though we also have had good news saying that some of the people who were abducted have been returned. But don't you think we'd rather want to hear that nobody was abducted as opposed to, oh, they abducted, but then we got them back. So really, is this strategy working? Yeah, so um, a, a journey of a thousand miles probably starts from somewhere. That's the way I look at it. Now, just to set it properly, the shooter site is not a strategy. It's a presidential directive. And the president, as the commander in chief, um, has given his directive. And instruction is shoot at sight anyone you see with an AK 47. Because by our laws, uh, you, private citizens cannot be licensed to carry assault rifles. You may get permission to carry a double barrel or uh, a shotgun but not an AK-49, AK-47, or M-21. So that's just a directive. Is that a strategy? No. Uh, I, I, I sense what the president is trying to do is to have 
the service chief understand his body language or what you call his um, operational philosophy mm -hmm. in dealing with the issue of banditry in the Northwest. So that's the body language. And that's, that's one arm to the approach. What, what must happen differently on the ground uh, would be that battle commanders will have to adjust strategies based on local exigencies. Mm -hmm. But again, like you said, we are overstretched. The military has operation in over 31 states. Uh, the police is um, having their own issues after the NSAS protest. Um, the military now have a strategy of having super camps mm -hmm. and leaving remote communities to fend for themselves at least before response can come. And even when you want to pull out from the barracks to respond, the military is also weary because the strategy of the OHs is to instigate violence in a place, wait for military response, and you ambush the military. Mm. Uh, so that's why you find that response again is delayed. Uh, sometimes it takes 12, 14 hours um, for the military to get a fair sense of what is happening and how they want to approach. But that, so but that, but that, again, is, but that again yeah. takes us back to you know, asking for help. Because, look, Governor Zulum is clamoring for this. He, 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 he said that, he, he made reference to the fact that under the Good Luck Administration, this was working. It helped to deal with these uh, insurgents. Um, he, in fact, I want to quote him. He talked about the fact that um, there was specialized tax um, training equipment and protection step, which was used to degrade these, the insurgents in the north. In fact, he said that this helped to pave way for elections to happen in Bauchi state. So if it was working in the first instance, why did we have to stop it? Was it that we saw um, that maybe we didn't really need to pay these mercenaries anymore? Was it a money issue? Or was it political? Because really, if, some, if these governors who are the ones who are facing the, the forefront of all of this insecurity in the northeast, and they are clamoring for these mercenaries to be brought back, and then the government, on the other hand, is saying, well, we don't, want it to make, we don't want to make it look like we are weak. Really, should the president not be listening to people who are really you know, facing the heat? So, so I hear you. Um, I'm, on, I'm on record to have said I, su I support Governor Zulum call for government to use missionary, at least to some extent, in addressing some of these issues. It is also correct that this machinery also came with their own equipment. The bane of the fight against insurgency and terrorism in the Northeast is a lack of close air support. Um, the lack of standoff munition, proper standoff munition, and proper suppressive fire to be able to put down and soften some of these um, hard targets that the military have. Uh, so yes, it is, it is correct that the machinery did uh, a good job, uh, but I would like to look at it differently. Governor Zulum, as with every other governor in Nigeria, is quick to push the buck back to the president. He's also correct to push it back because the president is the one who has total control of the use of force. I was about to say that. Yeah, so why don't we change the narrative? Why not the governors begin to call for state police? Why not? If Governor, if governor Zulu wants to spend money in hiring machinery, he should say he is willing, able, and has the resources, you know, to put the money on the table that will address this of um, the machinery. Mm -hmm. The civilian JTF that the governor has in Meduguri, find out how much each operative is earning per month. So talk is cheap certain times. I understand the pains of the governor also, but I think that Nigerians are letting our governors off the hook too easily. Ah, interesting. The governor should call for state police and decide that they want to be the true chief security officer of their state. But is that not going to take too much time? Abuja. Is that the process of recruiting police officers and training them is going to take a lot of time? Uh, these bandits, these insurgents, they're not going to be waiting for us while we're training new police officers to be state police officers. Yes, we're going That's to change, problem we're going to change a lot of things have. constitutionally also, and that doesn't take one month or two weeks. So all things being considered, um, 
that might not necessarily work in the interim, can it? So you, you, it's your point that the machinery, so it will work in the near term, but it's not a sustainable approach. We keep, we keep putting the cart before the horse in this country. Every approach to security should be local. You can't wait for Abuja to resolve an issue in Kankara or in Bongo or somewhere in Umar Piti in Abia State. The lo we, we talk about the president. The local government chairman draw from the, the federal account on a first line basis. The local government chairman should be chief security officers of the local government. As the state governor should be chief security officer of the state. If the governors are truly interested mm -hmm. and sincere about addressing the issue of in their state, they should sit down with the, the president and insist that okay. state police is the way to go. How long does it say state police? Well, well, uh, I would really want to dig into this conversation, especially about local governments, because that's what the whole kettle of fish on its own. But yeah. we have to go because we're out of time. Uh, Onyekachi Adekoya is a security expert. Thank you very much for having this conversation with us. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, first and foremost, we're going to find out what Nigerians uh, have to say about hiring mercenaries to fight insurgency. And then I will give you my take. I would suggest that the federal government should um, seek help, let me put it that way, from neighboring countries or from the international community to assist our country because security is really a problem. So if they can do that, fine, it would be good for us. I believe that uh, the federal government, they have all the machinery they need to fight the insurgents. I don't think they need, the, they need anybody's, any, any help from the public. They know what to do. We have the military. They should use the military to genuinely fight the insurgents. Nigerians are tired. Innocent people dying every day. I don't think federal government need any help to fight the terrorists because we, the Nigerian, they have our own soldier that's competent enough to fight the terrorists. So I don't think they need any other body from outside that. We can do this work on our own. The problem there is we need to draw a good map and also let someone else to be the brain behind so that we can be safe. I think, President, I think we need it. Because we have tried in as much as possible to be able to conquer all these uh, terrorists in our nation. But I see that we are still, you know, there is still some challenges here and there. So maybe we need, you know, I think we need a laboring, you know, soldier to be able to, or maybe to give our ministry men a strategy how they can go about it. But I think we need a higher, you know, man with a high profile to be able to handle it amicably. Here's my take. Accountability should be the watchword of every Nigerian, not just public office holders. Does this mean that we shouldn't hold a corrupt leader's account to account? No. But how accountable are you as a person? Are you accountable to your family? Are you accountable to society? At your job, in the little responsibility, the responsibilities that you're given, are you responsible? Accountable individuals take responsibility for their actions and behaviors. They communicate changes. They keep others in the loop. They set clear expectations and learn from failure because they can be counted on and others trust them. Can this be said of the Nigerian leader or even a follower? Because we're quick to point fingers at our leaders, but if we're individually tested on the grounds of accountability, how many of us would pass? To hold our leaders accountable, we must strive to be better persons. We must set standards so that these so-called leaders cannot but follow suit. The ball is in our court. I'm Mariana Cohn, thanking you for watching.